Good morning, and welcome to the 13th Annual Women in Technology Awards Celebration. I'm Deborah Breitfeld, and I'm the Executive Director and the CEO of the New Mexico Technology Council. On behalf of the Board of Directors and my colleagues, thank you for joining us today to celebrate and honor these outstanding women in technology. We have a great event in store for you and know you'll leave energized and proud of the phenomenal work of our honorees. Each year we choose a theme that helps bring our celebration into focus. This year's theme, Be Bold, Be Brave, Be You, was inspired by the incredible accomplishments and contributions of today's honorees. These women have all been bold and brave in their respective fields and created opportunities for others through their work as managers, mentors, and STEM advocates. By highlighting the incredible work done by the women in New Mexico's technology community, we hope to encourage all women to choose to be bold and brave and to aim high and refuse to be limited by outdated expectations. It is exciting to share that since 2009, the New Mexico Technology Council has recognized more than 100 outstanding women in technology in New Mexico. In addition to the awards ceremony, we will also be presenting a scholarship to a working woman to advance her career in the STEM arena, and that is sponsored by Nusenda Credit Union. None of this will be possible without the ongoing support of our community partners and members. Thank you so much for believing in the work of the New Mexico Technology Council and your continued engagement with our organization. Good morning, I'm Joshua Fristo, the 2021 Chair of the New Mexico Technology Council and the Chief Technology Officer with Cost Solutions. Welcome to the 13th Annual Women in Technology Award Celebration. The New Mexico Technology Council has been an important resource for me and my company by providing a conduit with other CIOs and giving me an opportunity to support important issues like workforce and broadband in New Mexico. I think we need more diversity in the technology workforce. And that starts with our youth and getting girls involved in STEM. I have a daughter and hope she will be interested in a STEM education. I continue to promote women in STEM and IT roles, but know that we need to keep working on growing the female population in these roles. The NMTC Women in Technology Celebration is so important as it continues to showcase the achievements of women in technology in New Mexico. It is great for girls and young women to see these accomplishments and to encourage them to consider a technology-related career. Through NMTC, events like this are key to growing the diverse workforce. My hope is that we can bring to light women in technology and help grow our STEM and IT female workforce. I would like to thank my fellow NMTC's Board of Directors for their dedication to the organization and to promoting women in technology. A special thanks to our sponsors for today's event who continue to believe in our mission of recognizing women in technology throughout New Mexico. These sponsors include Scholarship Sponsor, Lucinda, Silver Sponsors, City of Albuquerque, Comcast, Fat Pipe New Mexico, Presbyterian Healthcare Services, Tech Savvy Women, Bronze, Air Force Research Laboratory, Deloitte, Facebook, Feynman Center for Innovation Atlanta, New Mexico Manufacturing Extension Partnership, Tech Systems. Please give a virtual round of applause for these sponsors. And now I'd like to introduce Brian Arcelo, Director of Technology and Innovation at the City of Albuquerque. Thanks very much to Brian and the City for their continued support of the NMTC. The City of Albuquerque is always proud and grateful to partner with New Mexico Technology Council and especially in sponsoring the Women in Technology Awards. Congratulations to all of the honorees this year. I hope that the people watching, the young people especially, see in you what we see in you, I hope that, uh, that we see in ourselves what we see in you. Life is better with courage. To be bold, to be brave, to, uh, to continue to move forward 
as we experience difficult times like we have the last year. But this is the way New Mexico gets to be in the front. This is the way we move our local community, our state, our nation, and in fact our entire world ahead. How we get through our issues, how we improve life in general, and life specifically here in New Mexico. I want to thank you for bringing your excellence, for providing and promoting excellence to our community. I want to thank you for bettering us, bettering our today, and bettering our tomorrow. Congratulations on your award, and we look forward to the continued excellence in years to come. Thank you, Brian. We very much appreciate the support of the city of Albuquerque. And now I will turn it over to Mary Tiemann, NMTC's Community Affairs and Membership Development Director. Thank you, Deborah. We are absolutely thrilled to have J.J. DiGeronimo as our keynote speaker. J.J. is the president of Tech Savvy Women. She is one of the most highly regarded speakers, authors, and executive strategists to attract, retain, and advance professional women. She navigated her way from entry-level positions to top-level leadership roles within leading technology companies. Uh, and now shares those strategies and insights to help her accelerate her career and her audience. She has hosted hundreds of events for women in technology and has a passion for building the next gen female leaders. JJ is also the creator of Career Strategies for Women podcast. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce JJ DiGeronimo. Thank you so much, JJ. What a fantastic and motivational presentation. We applaud your work supporting women in their professional development and careers. And now what we've all been waiting for, our awards program. We received 49 nominations this year in recognition of the best women leaders, entrepreneurs, teachers, innovators, and community builders in technology here in our state. This year, we have seven amazing women to be recognized including our first ever Emerging Leader Award. The New Mexico Technology Council is grateful to last year's Women in Technology Award winners who served on the judging committee and evaluated the applications. We also want to applaud previous WIT honorees and those who were nominated and submitted applications this year. We consider you all outstanding women in technology. I am excited to introduce our honorees with the help of my colleagues, Mary Tiemann and Emily Bennett. So let's get started. Our first honoree is a legend in our community of whom we are very proud. Sandra Begay is a principal member of the technical staff at Sandia National Laboratories. Thank you to Rio Grande Credit Union for sponsoring her award. Sandra is the daughter of a Navajo tribal leader and a public health nurse, a member of the Navajo Nation, and she has been an engineer for 32 years. She has provided energy-related technical assistance to tribes, pueblos, and the Navajo Nation, being instrumental in creating tribal stra strategic energy plans and the deployment of dozens of solar-powered systems in tribal communities. She earned an associate's degree in pre-engineering, a bachelor of science degree in civil engineering from UNM, and a master of science from Stanford University in structural engineering. Sandra has worked at Sandia National Labs for 29 years, where she is a research and development engineer. She also worked for Mayor Tim Keller as the city's environmental health director, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, and Los Alamos National Laboratory. It is our pleasure to honor the outstanding achievements of Sandra Begay. The idea of becoming an engineer hit me when I was 10 years old. My teacher really emphasized building renderings and uh, I asked, is there a career, maybe like an architect to work with people? And he says, yes, you have to do a lot of rendering, which meant drawing. And uh, I thought, I'm not artistic. I knew that about myself already. 
And so I asked, I said, what else could I do? He says, well, you could become an engineer. And that's where the seed was planted. Well, I'm Sandra Begay, and I've been at Sandia Labs for 29 years. My title at Sandia is called a principal member of the technical staff, but otherwise known as a researcher. And I work directly with tribes on their renewable energy projects. I think everybody has difficulty in engineering and science, but I think especially because I'm both a woman and a Native American, I'm one out of 13,000 U.S. engineers. I think what drives me is to have people like myself who've had a career explain what it, it's like to get to this point. And I think that's been part of the joy of my job in, in my career, is directly talking to people who have a mission for their tribal lands. They want to sustain, they want to be around for another several hundred years. And to be able to help them out by problem solving, how to meet their challenge, that's been a real joy for me. Because I've had such unique opportunities, I decided to hire a student, Debbie Tewa, and she was my first student intern. So over time, as of 2019, there's been 44 interns that have been through Sandia Labs that, that I've supervised. I learned to surround myself with people who know more than I do. And so over that time, I've grown people to replace me, to be able to do this kind of work on tribal lands. I am very proud to be a Navajo woman, and I think people who get to know me understand what that means, is that I bring that to everything that I, I bring to the table as an engineer. I'm comfortable in my own skin. As a woman, I'm in a male-dominated field. I think that notion of putting me in a box is not going to work uh, because I don't do things the way everybody else does. Good morning. I am Sandra Begay. I work at, at Sandia National Labs. I'm very honored this morning to accept the award for from the New Mexico Technology Council, the Women in Technology Award. Um, I wanted to give a few remarks about my work and um, again, say how grateful I am. Um, I wanted to just show you the award. Um, it's beautiful engraved non-bayware. I've been uh, very honored to receive this award and to have been nominated from Sandia Labs to acknowledge some of the work that I've done um, since about 2002 working with tribes across the United States. It's been very rewarding to work as an engineer to support tribes who have an energy vision. Specifically, I've been able to facilitate dialogue, give a little bit of an overview of tech, the different technologies based on what a tribe's natural resource uh, might be and how they might be able to utilize that for energy, either generation or development. Um, I've been fortunate, again, to travel all across the United States uh, to be able to interact with tribal communities and really help them understand um, where technology such as renewable energy development may be helpful to the people out in the Indian country. Um, I have uh, wanted to say that I am a member of the Navajo Nation. I grew up in the Gallup, New Mexico area. My home Navajo community is Church Rock, right off of Interstate 40. Um, I'd love to give acknowledgement to my family to be so supportive of my work. My dad, Edward T. B. Gay, he's 86, and I'm very uh, grateful to have my dad as, as a, a mentor and to be able to talk to him about my work. I'm grateful to my sister, Charlene Begay Platero, and her family her husband, John, Jenna, Ba, and Josh, who've been also supportive of my career. Um, I also have many good, dear friends who help me on a day-to-day -day basis when I um, need some support or reassurance. They've been there to support me in any way they can. I'm so grateful for my friends and people who support my work. I could not have done this type of work without the networks that I've developed throughout Indian country, New Mexico, and in the Albuquerque area. I'm also grateful to the University of New Mexico as an alumni from the School of Engineering to be able to give back as a Board of Regent member, um, to be able to see where the university is headed, but also to be supportive of the student staff and faculty at UNM. Um, as a woman in technology, a woman engineer, I think it's a, maybe a different point of view in these forums to give uh, my thoughts uh, 
in, in context of how do we support our community, whether academia or in Indian country, I'm always willing to help. And I, I appreciate that people ask for my help. Um, I'm grateful for the sponsors of the award, the New Mexico Technology Council, the committee who read through all the applications. I appreciate your time and effort to go through the process. Uh, again, I am so very honored to be a part of the awards. Um, I'd also like in specific to um, be thankful for the support of the UNM Rainforest Innovations, Lisa Kudla and her team. Um, I've been honored to be the chairman of the board for that organization and to be a part of that board for many years. It's exciting to see where we're headed with technology and support of technology transfer and, and patents and startups. So I also um, enjoy that experience beyond my Sandia work. Um, again, I am very grateful to the many people who um, have, have really been supportive um, through the different things that I've, I've tried to attempt in my career. And I, I feel that it's very rewarding. And uh, to have an award such as this a given today, I am very, very honored. Um, it is exciting to be a part of a group of women who've been able to achieve such, such great things in their career. So again, thank you to the New Mexico Technology Council, those who have sponsored my award, and also to the people at Sandia who nominated me for this award. Thank you so very much. Wow, what an incredible career. Congratulations again, Sandra. Our next honoree is Jessica DuVernay. She's the Director of Design at RS21, and her award is sponsored by Simparis. Thank you again, Simparis. Jessica is a leader in the field of user experience and user interface UX UI design and has worked with clients in complex and diverse domains, including municipalities, universities, private industry, and healthcare. She was also the collaborator with CNM Ingenuity to develop the curriculum for the UX UI design that resulted in an all woman deep dive cohort. As a proponent of healthy workplaces, at RS21, Jessica has helped to start the Values, Employee Wellbeing, and Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Groups. She is truly an advocate for women in technology. As a leader, she prioritizes supporting healthy, happy, balanced, sustainable teams. She believes in empowering all of the employees to be the architect of their own solutions and while also providing mentorship and guidance required to help them achieve the change and impact that they wish to make. She has a bachelor's degree from Michigan State University and a master's of science in information from University of Michigan. Please help us congratulate Jessica DuVernay. When people ask me what makes me excited about my career and, and what drives me to keep going is the ability to be creative and have fun. And at RS21, I feel incredibly empowered. And the last thing that really makes me inspired to do my job, and frankly, why I decided to work at RS21, is the impact that our work has in, in the real life. My name is Jess DuVernay and I'm the Director of Design at RS21. I had uh, been a teacher quit being a teacher and went to grad school for library science. When I was in library science, I decided that I should actually work in human computer interaction. That's how I got into information architecture and user experience design, which is now kind of what I lead for my team. The way that I, I like to describe myself is that I'm very creative and um, my undergrad degree is in art, but I'm also very analytical and organized. And so having these kinds of uh, dualities in my personality, I think lead to good leadership. Within my first year at RS21, um, I had a conversation with our CEO, Charles Rath. At one of our leadership retreats, he presented us with a bunch of goals and I said, hey, what are we pursuing these goals for if we don't have a sense of vision or purpose or the values of our company? The conversation ended up being really productive and the result of that was now we have a set of nine core values 
and we pretty much incorporate them into everything we do at RS21. So that was a moment where I really felt like I stepped into my power as, as a leader. I was proud of taking that risk and I was also proud of the impact it had on RS21. In order for women to meet the top leadership levels of STEM, I think there's a lot of opportunity for not just businesses, but for our society in a whole. There's this thought of, you know, women should mentor other women. And I think it's really important to note that it's also men's responsibility to advocate for women. My thought is, is that um, rising tide should raise all ships. And so those kinds of encouraging people, I think creates an intrinsically motivated staff and also kind of models for them that, hey, like you don't have to be in this box that you think you're in, you can actually kind of expand beyond that. Hi, thank you to the New Mexico Tech Council for honoring me with this award. <laughs> I appreciate the support of the council and previous honorees for validating my life choices and for more importantly, my commitment to happy, healthy, equitable STEM workplaces. Thank you so much for creating a professional community that elevates the careers of women and gives women a platform to be heard, seen, and most importantly, to lead. Congratulations also to the other award recipients today. I'm grateful to be included in such accomplished, bold, generous, and empowered company. Since we've not had the pleasure of meeting in person yet, except for Stephanie, uh, hit me up on LinkedIn or maybe meet me downtown later tonight for a celebratory cheers. And I literally wouldn't be here today without the thoughtful and kind nominations from Natalie Summer and Aaron Scott Adams. Thank you both. Um, I'm now going to do the most 2020 thing possible, 2021 thing possible, and share my screen. Um, I wanted to take some time to specifically thank all of these people on the list. Receiving your support and love, fielding your constructive criticism, rising to your challenges, and learning from you have made me who I am. You are all catalysts for my professional and personal evolution. Thank you. Uh, in the spirit of advocating for women in STEM, I'd also like to dedicate this award to three New Mexican young women in STEM. I've had the fortune of working closely with these women. I've learned with and from them, and I believe they may be honorees of this award in the not so distant future. Celine, thank you for your wisdom, limitless creativity, and being unapologetically yourself. Alicia, it's inspiring to see you sharpen your voice and grow into the talented designer you are. I'm incredibly proud of you. And Persephone, Thank you for giving me hope that the world is going in the right direction. I'm beyond thankful our paths have crossed. Finally, thanks in, to everyone in attendance here today for the things you've done, the things you are doing, the things you will do in the future, and the things you didn't even know you did when lifting up others, especially women, especially in this incredibly challenging last year. Cheers to everyone, and thanks again to the New Mexico Technology Council for honoring me with this award. Wow, Jessica, congratulations. You don't have to go far from Jessica to find our next honoree. Just walk down the hall or jump on a weekly Zoom call. We are excited to recognize Stephanie Garadia, the VP of Health Analytics at RS21 Health Lab. Big thanks to UNM Rainforest Innovations for sponsoring this award. At RS21, Stephanie is responsible for the Health Lab Division's data tools and analytics development, as well as overseeing the product and services delivery for clients, which includes exclusively health and healthcare applications in AI and data science, software development, and big data engineering. She co-founded Versatile Med Analytics in 2017, a healthcare analytics and business intelligence startup that was acquired in 2021 by RS21. Stephanie is a strong advocate for women and minorities in STEM and is the current president of the New Mexico Health Information Management Systems Society chapter. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Statistics and Economics from UNM and a Master's of Science in Industrial Engineering from NMSU. Congratulations, Stephanie. We are so happy to honor you today. In college, I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I jumped around from major to major. And then I ended up in a statistics class, and I hadn't realized it, but that was a mathematical way for me to always answer why. I'd always grown up asking why, why, why. My name is Stephanie Garadia. I'm the Vice President of Healthcare Analytics for RS21's newly minted health lab. I was programming computers at 12, and you know, by the time I was 16, I was dropping out of, of high school. And when people hear that now, they're really surprised. And I think that sometimes that haunts me, thinking I don't fit the persona of 
you know, a successful entrepreneur or a successful vice president of analytics who's leading product development and leading a company. And it's interesting because when we did that in 2017, um, my co-founder, Angelica, she is the most fiscally responsible person that I know. And she was actually the one who convinced me to quit our jobs without any customers in the pipeline and, and to just do it. That was easily like the best and the hardest decision, you know, that I've made. I've learned a lot over the last three and a half years. I'm really proud of my Myself to have done it. So I think advocacy for women and minorities in STEM is a strong platform of mine. I never really thought about it that way until recently when I started to realize and look at the statistics of, of how that actually is correlated with less funding and salaries, even just confidence and things like that in these fields. And so when I can, I volunteer my time to mentoring, you know, either young and upcoming professionals about careers in data. And then I think fostering confidence in, in young women in math and science and getting them involved from a young age and encouraging that is definitely at the forefront of, of my platform. And then because of the complexities of healthcare and just the massive amounts of growing data that's out there today. I really love being able to sort through and cut through noise in the data and being able to translate that into something meaningful. Once you kind of get on that kick and you go down the rabbit hole, it's actually very fulfilling. And now I'm really looking forward to making a big difference on a larger scale with, uh, surrounded by a team of really great people that can take what we've developed and then propel that further. Hey techies. Stephanie Garadia coming at you from my most natural of elements here in front of a computer, my home office, where I'm sporting a beautiful new award. Thank you very much to all of you for this award, the New Mexico Technology Council first and foremost, of course, but uh, my husband who's been incredibly supportive when I'm in front of my computer for 13, 14 hours a day, friends, colleagues, all of you all who have supported me with your patronage and your patience and your motivation when I was digging really, really deep um, for some of that. For those of you who know me, I uh, feel blessed and lucky every day to be where I'm at and hope to continue to use my platform to advocate for women, minorities, really anybody uh, to get into technology and for the rest of us to help uh, uplift them and rather than tearing one another down. Um, our technology community here in New Mexico is very small, and uh, if we can continue to cross collaborate and rather than compete and encourage one another and mentor others, um, I really think that we could be really special and I hope that we can continue the great momentum that that started uh, and that others and other champions continue to move forward like the NMTC and other groups uh, and companies who who make that their mission so that's my plea. And again, thank you all so much. Uh, just, I'm honored and, and just feel blessed beyond words. So thank you, everybody. Before we resume our program, at this time, I would like to recognize our innovation sponsors. Thank you very much. A&M, Cisco, Fab Lab Hub, Hub, Heritage Audio and Visual, Jax and Flux Visual Storytellers, Metis, Myers Era Consulting, RS21, Rural Sourcing, True Health New Mexico, and Westwind. And now back to our Women in Technology honorees. And now our next honoree is Shelley Gruning. Shelly is the CEO, Executive Director, and Founder of Be Greater Than Average and R4 Creating, a company that provides STEM enrichment nationwide that has impacted thousands of K-12 students in the pursuit of a career in technology. Many thanks to Intentional Finance LLC for sponsoring Shelly's award. Shelly is a speaker, author, STEM entrepreneur, coach of a championship robotics team, co-host of the STEM Southwest podcast and a STEM segment on CBS. Her passion is to help kids pursue excellence in emerging technologies and launch their lives. Through Shelley's nonprofit, R4 Creating, she mentors young women involved in their robotics team, additive manufacturing program, and workforce training program. Her team, R4 Robotics, is a 13-time state champion, six-time regional champion, and has won the prestigious Google Community International Award with VEX Robotics. 
All of her programs are based on mentoring and inclusion. Shelley has a bachelor's degree from Western Illinois University, a master's of education from Loyola University in Chicago, and a PhD in workforce education from Southern Illinois University. We're so pleased today to recognize and honor Shelley Grunig. I am no longer afraid. I don't sit in the background. Instead, I realize that it's my responsibility to go out and represent and be bold so that there can be these amazing opportunities for kids. My name is Dr. Shelley Grudig. I'm the CEO of Be Greater Than Average. As a homeschool mom to three, I was looking for something fun to do in science for my kids and stumbled across a robotics competition. That was in 2005, a few years back. My kids are now grown and graduated, but from that, came this opportunity to coach groups of kids and kids helped me to build the business and learned through it as STEM entrepreneurs themselves. As a young girl, I was really, I loved science. I was very passionate about it, but it was a day and age when girls weren't really encouraged in the way that we try and encourage them these days. And so what really motivates me is obviously the kids that come and are so excited to find their people, to figure out things like we always talk about how you can fail forward. There are no mistakes. We can repurpose that and grow from it and we can reiterate through the engineering design process. And so it is all about the kids for me, but also building the STEM workforce pipeline. Like that has been my goal from the beginning to really link, be a bridge and be a pathway to a future because New Mexico is so important to me. One of the things that we focus on, it's not just about the technology, it's about building learners into leaders. I always say the boys often come through the front door. They're like, hey, that's a really cool robot or that's a cool drone. And often our young women come through the side door. And so I think that we have to develop programs that can respond to that. And we've done that really well over the years because I've had so much amazing support. And I think that I'm really proof that you just continue to learn as you grow and age and that it's never too late to get involved in STEM. At Be Greater Than Average and our nonprofit R4 Creating, we encourage students to be the best version of themselves possible. Our educational programs in emerging technology build learners into leaders and grow the New Mexico STEM workforce pipeline. It is with profound gratitude that I accept this award as New Mexico Tech Council Women in Technology honoree. What started out as a way to encourage my own children in, into STEM careers has grown into a program that serves thousands of students and educators across the nation. While I am the one accepting this award, there are many people that have believed in and supported my work and ideas, including my family, and my co-host of STEM Southwest podcast, my husband, Bob, our children, grandchild, and daughter-in-law, the Be Greater Than Average staff, especially Karina and Melissa and Erica, many hundreds of students and their families, as well as community volunteers and business partners. Thank you. Each of you have made this possible. This is a true example of how, by saying yes, a group of ordinary people can accomplish extraordinary things together. I feel so blessed to have found my people and pursue my own calling, and I'd like to invite you to join me in this adventure. Another wonderful, inspiring story. Thank you, Shelley, for all that you do. It is truly an honor to have Nusenda Credit Union as our scholarship sponsor today. Thank you, Nusenda, for supporting STEM education in New Mexico. Hi, I'm Ernesta Vial, Core Systems Manager at Nusenda Credit Union. We're so excited to be part of the Women in Technology Awards hosted by the New Mexico Technology Council. 
Lucinda has a long-standing commitment to education and technology initiatives and investments across the state of New Mexico. This year, more than ever, we've seen the importance of technology, keeping the world connected. We're here today with great researchers, developers, and leaders from across the state. Your many contributions make a real difference in New Mexico. Lucinda is proud to support women in technology, and we're glad to support women in STEM education and career development. We're honored to award this year's Women in Technology Scholarship to Vivian Gonzalez. Vivian, we're inspired and encouraged by your story and your dedication to making your dreams come true. We can't wait to see what you accomplish in computer science. From everyone here today and from all of Nusenda, congratulations. Hello, I hope everyone's having a great time. I know I am. My name is Vivian Gonzalez and I am a computer science major at UNM. I cannot express my gratitude enough for this amazing scholarship. I would like to thank Nusenda Credit Union for their very generous support, my family for always being my rock, and Mana de Albuquerque for building a youth leadership program where I am grateful to serve as a mentor. Without your time, dedication, and mentorship, I could not continue my path into becoming a software engineer. Thank you so much. And now our final Women in Technology honorees. Our next honoree, Pamela Custer is a tech-minded, community-focused entrepreneur and innovator. Many thanks to Artem Technologies for sponsoring Pamela's award today. She is the co-founder of and CEO of Falling Colors, a company that focuses on improving health care and eliminates gaps, imbalances, and challenges inside systems of care that address needs of the most impoverished and underserved people. Pamela's company is in a male-dominated space with computer programmers, still being mostly male-dominated. They focus on recruiting women applicants through networking channels, linguistic analysis of job postings, and having women as an integral part of the interview process. With the profound negative impacts the pandemic has, was having on small businesses, the Falling Colors Foundation funds transitioned to the COVID-19 Bridge Fund to help businesses hold on until the government funding could become available. They used their platform to distribute over $200,000 to 222 small businesses in Santa Fe County. Pamela has a bachelor's degree from UNM in sociology and women's studies and completed her master's program in social justice and community development. We are pleased to recognize Pamela Coster. I have never met a system that I didn't want to fix. No matter what thing hits you upside the head when you're not expecting it, just keep going. Don't give up because you'll be really surprised what you can accomplish. I'm Pamela Coster. The organization is Falling Colors, and I'm the CEO. And for a long time, I looked at our system of distributing money, and it wasn't working very well. And so I decided that we could do a much better job. I would like to influence my industry to think about all the ways that we can positively impact our communities, our workers, our planet. A lot of businesses are doing that. There's many corporations that are saying we're going to take social good and they truly believe it and they truly work on it as one of our goals, but it's not enough. I think we need more companies, more CEOs, more CFOs who are saying we are going to use our influence for the good. We are going to provide for our community and we're going to provide for our workers the best possible things we can. I get very excited when we can make an impact that I can see out in the world. And when you fix a system that is meant to help people that isn't really helping, actually get that system working, it's, it's a remarkable sensation. It's great. I think any woman who is 
In a tech career takes risks every single day. When I first started, I was always the only woman at the table and the kind of toughness you need to exude at, at that time, I no longer really feel is required. We all have obstacles, we all have struggles. So seeing that obstacle and saying, okay, I can't get through it this way and try something new, I think it takes boldness to make change. I think being in tech as a woman is a change. I think that there's very little you can do in life that isn't bold. Hi, my name is Pamela Coster, and I'd like to thank the New Mexico Technology Council for this award. I'd also like to thank Liz Camucho for nominating me. Our company, Falling Colors, and the City of Santa Fe have been able to partner together in some really interesting projects. Thank you to all who participated. I'd also like to thank Barbara Serna and Jenny Kimball for writing me letters of support. They were lovely. Now we women in tech have come a long way, but we have a long way to go. And the only way we're gonna get there is by supporting each other as exemplified by things like this award. Together, we can do this. I know we can. Again, thank you to everyone for honoring me in this way. Thank you, Pamela. And we'd like to thank ABBA Technologies for sponsoring our next honoree. Dr. Lori LeBrock is the director of the New Mexico Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, the New Mexico Tech Cybersecurity Education Center, as well as a professor of computer science and engineering. Her work with the cybersecurity centers leads projects including a summer institute with Sandia National Laboratories, an expansion project for Codebreaker Challenge, and an economic development project to help New Mexico companies prepare for cybersecurity maturity model certification. Lori has extensive experience in cybersecurity as well as parallel and high performance computing. Her research includes enterprise wide cybersecurity, foundations of computer science, information assurance, parallel processing, and vis visualization with a focus on complex problems that require the integration of many aspects of computer science. She holds a Bachelor's of Science and Master in Science in Computer Science from Michigan Technological University and a Master's of Science and PhD in Computer Science from Rice University. It is our pleasure to recognize Lori LeBrock. What I got really excited about in computer science is you can make a computer do anything. And it's just really fun to figure out what is a good way to express this thing you want it to do. Hi, I'm Lori Liebrock. Well, I'm the director of two cybersecurity centers here in New Mexico and a faculty member at New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology in the computer science and engineering department. I was the first in my extended family to think about going to college and my father in particular was very supportive and said, you can do anything you want to do. I started going to college at Delta Community College and I worked full time at Kmart back then to put myself through school. That led to an opportunity to get a master's degree after I finished my bachelor's and to really start teaching there. I got my PhD because I love to teach and New Mexico Tech was just the right fit. The thing that I'm most passionate about is really helping students and colleagues and just everyone I work with become their best professional happy self. For me, I do consider a lot of things I do mentoring both for colleagues and students and, and I get a lot of mentoring whether students know it or not from them even. And so I think one of the biggest things we can do for increasing women and underrepresented students, whether it's from low income or from a minority group, is outreach opportunities, the cybersecurity program, the women in computer science program. They're all about helping students that don't have the exposure get that opportunity. We can help improve the engagement of all of our fellow citizens in making our country better, making our lives better. Hello everyone, 
It's my honor to be awarded the Women in Technology Award this year by the New Mexico Technology Council. To be awarded with this amazing group of women is really an outstanding honor. So thank you to the Technology Council for this selection. Um, thank you to Sharon Sessions for nominating me. And a huge shout out thank you to my husband who is my daily supporter and challenger in everything I do. Um, the folks that here at New Mexico Tech have been wonderful to work with over the years. And the women's group here that is on a daily basis celebrating when we have successes and providing a shoulder to lean on when we have challenges are really a fundamental part of my success. Without the team here at Tech, I wouldn't have been able to do what I've been able to accomplish. Um, so for the last 19 years here at New Mexico Tech, I've been working to help students prepare for and contribute to our society in cybersecurity. Our program here that was just approved this year in transdisciplinary cybersecurity focuses on preparing students from a wide variety of disciplines to contribute to society in making us more secure, ensuring our privacy, and helping us as a nation and as a state in particular be more successful with fewer losses. So I'd like to encourage all of you, the women and the men, to contribute to cybersecurity in your daily life and consider it for a discipline as you transition between the multiple careers we all now face. So thank you all for this great honor and have a wonderful day. Thanks. Extreme Networks also generously sponsored this award. Thank you, Extreme Networks. Congratulations, Lori. It's always such a pleasure to hear about all of the great work that you're doing. And now for our first ever Emerging Leader Award. Our gratitude goes out to Respec for sponsoring this next honoree. Tara King is the Developer Outreach Manager at Pantheon. She is an active advocate for open source technology and diversity and inclusion. She is a self-taught developer currently leading Pantheon's community team, where she helps web developers find success, build their skills, and develop their professional networks. Prior to working at Pantheon, Tara was a senior developer at Universal Music Group, where she led a massive internet project to support Universal's global employee base. She has a Bachelor of Arts in Cultural Anthropology from McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota, and taught herself to code via community participation and YouTube. And now let's hear from Tara. And in this world, it was like all these fun problems, all these hard questions and these wonderful people. And so I just kind of realized that's where I want to be. So my name is Tara Renee King and my industry is open source development. So I'm working with people in the Drupal and WordPress communities to build the tools that people use to make websites around the world. My history is a bit unique. A lot of people don't come from this kind of fully self-taught background. I am a tech person who loves people and I, I don't really see them as separate. I know a lot of people want to just be focused on the code or just on the tech. And I really spend a lot of time working on my communication, my listening, my writing to help people feel comfortable. Um, kind of really focused on that human element, I think is, is one thing that I pride myself on. I think for, for women in tech and for underrepresented people in tech generally, there's sort of a, a constant series of risks because you're often the only person in the room that looks like you or has your background. The first big one I can think of was the moment that I decided to call myself a developer. It was a really, you know, coming from this other industry and, and feeling sort of like, I don't know if I qualify, like I don't have a degree, I don't have the credentials, and going in and saying, I want to be a Drupal developer, like putting that on my resume, putting that on my, you know, cover letters, and interviewing in that way took a huge amount of work on myself and a huge amount of encouragement from people who were able to see my skills in a way that I wasn't able to see. Um, so I'd say that was like the first kind of big, this is what I want to do and I'm going to actually step into that and own it. And it was very early in my career, but I think it's shaped 
so much of what's come after her. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for this award. I'm Terry King and I am so, so honored to receive the New Mexico Tech Council's Women in Technology Emerging Leader Award. You know, 10 years ago when I was teaching myself PHP and web development at night and on the weekends, I never would have expected to be winning any kind of award. I really just wanted to make one good website. Luckily, in the process of learning how to make one good website, I stumbled onto the Drupal community, which is an amazing community of web developers and open source contributors. Over the years, these folks have taught me so much, not just about development, but about community building and leadership. And they've opened the door for me to have a really wonderful and fulfilling career. Open source has already changed the world. It's used by countless businesses in every industry, but it's not a very diverse place for those of us who are building the software. So it's been a real joy to connect with other women, GLBTQ folks, with people of color in open source to make those environments more supportive and more reflective of the world that's using open source software every single day. I hope to continue leading the way in making open source a more diverse and welcoming place for all people. And this award shows how important that work really is. Thank you so much to my partner, Paul Schultzenberg, for his support. Thank you to Drupal Diversity and Inclusion for believing in me on my journey to leadership and giving me so many opportunities to mentor and give back. Thank you to Carolyn Shannon, Drew Gorton, Alex Lochnan, and Sarah German for supporting me throughout my career. Thank you to my parents for putting a computer in my hands at a very early age, I mean really very early. And of course, of course, thank you to the New Mexico Tech Council. This has been a wonderful experience and I'm so proud to represent New Mexico in our global open source community. Thank you. Didn't I tell you these women were impressive? Let's give all of our award winners one final round of applause today. Our gratitude goes out to all of our sponsors for today's event. Thank you all for joining us and for your support of the New Mexico Technology Council, one of the most important and abundant resources in New Mexico, women in technology. And we look forward to seeing you in person soon. Have a great day.